fun. Hey friends, so today I'm going to be making a Kurumuki box. So it's something like one of these. I'll just show you. So yeah, so something like this where I carve in some texture and um, it's basically like a square box kind of that has a lid that comes off and I just think they're really cute. I love using them for jewellery or you can even use them as sugar pots, that kind of thing. They're just like super cute. Um, this one has like an Uribe style glaze on it, um, which I think is really pretty. So yeah, I'll first show you how I do the first step of that. Um, and then I'll take you through all the other steps once the clay dries. So I first start with, I'll just switch you around. I'm watching The Good Wife. <laughs> um, so yeah, I first start with a block of clay. This is 1.5 kg. I use a flecked stoneware um, clay with a little bit of grog in, it, grog in it, which I think is good for um, Kurunuki work. And I have just shaped this into a cube, just um, a regular cube. But of course you can make this any shape you want if you want it to be more of a rectangle or taller, totally up to you, but I like to make them square. And I'm going to first start by hollowing it out. So I'm just going to set you up there. Perfect. It's basically like freshly wedged clay that's kind of let dry a slight bit just so that it's not super sticky for the hollowing out stage. I just, for the box, I actually quite like to measure them. So I measure two centimetres down each side which will form the lid, which for my American friends is, oh my God, do they not have inches? Oh, they do. <laughs> is about, I guess, what is it? Two centimeters is about, oh my God, inches is so hard. Three quarters of an inch, maybe? Sorry, two centimeters. <laughs> And then I, if you want, you can just join those up using a line. I find this kind of unnecessary. I kind of just use a wire tool to cut them and just make sure they line up on the little bits I've just drawn. But I think if you're doing this for the first time, it's helpful to draw the line just so that you know that you're um, kind of getting it straight. And then I just use a wire tool just to cut that lid off. Just line that up to the um, kind of lines you've just marked and then just pull it through and it should come out more or less straight. Don't worry if it's a bit lopsided, like it's gone down a little bit here, it doesn't really matter. I always just mark with a line one side so I know the orientation of the lid once I take it off. This clay is actually a bit on the wetter side so it's actually a bit too sticky to do this step. So. I would leave your clay just a little bit um, more to firm up, but I'll still show you on this. It's still fine to do. It's just a little bit more tricky to get a good fit. So then I kind of just measure out um, 1.5 centimeters from the edge to d draw a little box on the inside. And this will form the interior of the box but I kind of leave enough clay in the walls, so 1.5 centimetres in the walls, um, which is, I don't know, about half an inch, I think, um, to give me some um, clay in the walls to actually, <clears throat> to leave enough clay in the walls that I can carve the outside really nicely without making a hole in the wall. So then I put, put the lid back on give it a slight tap, take it off again. And then, I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's like left a slight imprint. So that's just a quicker way to get the same measurements on the roof. So the roof, the lid of the box. And I'm just gonna gently just mark those just so they're a little bit more visible. So first I start with the 
box part, I guess the interior bit. And I'm gonna start to carve out all of the clay basically in that square. I first use one of these tools, these kind of um, uh, loop tools, but this one has like a slant. So if I hold it straight, the actual has a bit of a slant here. And I find that is quite good at digging in um, compared to a tool that is like this which is straight, so if I compare them side to side. This one is angled. So <clears throat> I just find that gives me a nice point to dig into the clay. So I'm just gonna follow that line. First digging in, taking out strips of clay, and this gives me a good foundation, kind of a guide to follow. Then I just take out the center bit in strips and I kind of go again. And then I probably give my, I probably can do that two times. If I try to go in a bit more, then um, this will knock into the wall. So that's when I switch to the flatter one and I just take out strips of clay, basically following those walls I've just made, extending them down to the base so you want to leave a bit in the base i actually leave these boxes flat so i actually carve them quite thin to the base if you want to carve a foot ring into the bottom it's best to leave about one centimeter in the base or 1.5 centimeters depending on how you know deep you want to make that foot but i actually leave the bottom flat so i've kind of um dug very close to the bottom you really want to, with Kuranuki, you have a very high chance of a crack forming in the base. Um, so if you leave your base on the thinner side, that's better. I always find if I have a very thick base, that's when I start to get cracks. Then I just run my tool up the wall just to smooth any of those carves, carving marks I've made, which will make the next step easier. So if I show you on this side, you can see that I have these strips. On this side where I've just run the tool up, it's much smoother. So it will just help when we're actually um, kind of finishing the pot up. Um, in the next step, not having those strips really helps to get a smooth finish on the inside. So yeah, that's it. That's the box done for this step. And I'm going to take the lid. So for the lid, I actually carve away to form the gallery. I think traditionally what potters do is they'll probably put a sausage of clay to form the gallery to, for the lid to sit into the pot. But I prefer to carve it out. I just find it a bit quicker. So I'm just using that line as a guide and I'm going to carve away a strip of clay on the outside of the line. And <clears throat> I hold it up. So basically I'll carve away this strip and I just give myself a little bit so I don't go up to the line, I kind of go on this side of that line just in case um, what I've made here is not accurate. So it gives me a bit more clay to work with. So I could take that flat tool, put it down. So you wanna carve about something like that into, let me measure that, what's that? Maybe about half a centimeter into the lid to form that gallery. So there you can see, I've actually gone a bit too far down here compared to that side. So I just slightly even that out a little bit, but it's not, I mean, you can kind of alter it with your fingers, but at this stage, I just wanna get the clay off and then I'll start properly shaping it. So yeah, now I've kind of removed all of the clay from the outside. I'm just gonna run my finger over just to smooth over those kind of what I've just cut out, just so that they're kind of a bit more seamless. And then I just kind of smooth over that edge. 
like that. Might just smooth over this bit as well. So next is just to take out the inside. So I, I'm just kind of doing it by eye, but I'm just leaving a strip of clay to form that gallery. I don't want it to be too thin. So I'm just removing any excess bit by bit just from the inside. It's a little bit more tricky to carve away the inside because you just don't want to make those kind of that gallery bit too thin. Something like that. And then I will just smooth that over again with my finger. And then with all these bits, I get a sponge, but not too wet, just to smooth over those bits. those kind of messy bits and again I probably will just take the sponge on the outside just to smooth over those bits you just don't want to make the clay too wet at this point because we want to still see if it fits our box so we don't want the clay sticking too much which is why it's best to start with clay a bit on the drier side I would say this clay is a little bit too wet <laughs> so I've got um, some suggestions or videos for um, future tutorials one um i think i got one on instagram actually if you want to follow me over on instagram i do um kind of more frequent shorter tutorials um it's just blank at blank earth um but yes i think one of you she asked for some more like tips on just the kurunuki technique in general she was having problems with cracks in the base um, which is definitely a problem of Kurunuki that um, you don't get to compress the base too much as you do in wheel throwing and you are prone to getting cracks but I have a few tips that help me with that so I can kind of share those with you guys if you find that interesting unless maybe I could do that as a short or something might be because I don't know if it's like enough for a few, full video or maybe I can just mention it in a vlog but yeah so I'm just spending some time so yeah, just let me know if that appeals to you. Just let me know in the comments down below and I'll go ahead and do that. But yeah, cracks can be very frustrating. I do also find like the actual clay I use, this one doesn't crack as much as the one I actually throw with. So I always generally use this clay to do my Kurunuki pieces. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the gallery done. So now we want to kind of make sure that fits nicely in our box. You just want to make sure it kind of fits more or less into the box because you can alter this at the next step, but if we get the fit right now, it will just make our life easier in the next part. So yeah, I'm going to get the box part. just smooth over these lines and just to smooth over that opening just so that there's no like lots of bits of clay that will stick <clears throat> so again I just find that mark so that's the line I drew and it goes with this guy so this is the orientation and then I kind of just like place it on top and I come down to the box so that I can see it kind of if it will fit in actually the fit is pretty much nearly there it's just a little bit on the um bigger side so the gallery is a little bit bigger to fit in there so I'm just going to alter that slightly so I'm just going to press the gallery in ever so slightly just to help that fit into the opening this is why it's good to do it this stage because you can easily just push the clay around while it's soft but when it's a bit dry you have to carve it and that can um, kind of make the gallery a bit weaker so again I'll place that in again just coming down to eye level and that's actually a pretty good fit I don't want to like push it in because because the clay is on the stickier side it definitely will get stuck so I'm just going to flip that over actually and just let it dry on top if your clay is like a bit drier and you don't get the clay sticking um, what you can do is actually dry them together which is probably a bit better because then they kind of retain their shape but because I'm going to be carving this once the clay is drier I'm going to let this dry out basically leave it till about level hard 
and then come back and carve it i can just refine that gallery just to make sure the fit is super nice but it's pretty much there so yeah i'm gonna let this guy dry out um to you're looking for about leather hard so something where the obviously in the next part of the video you'll be able to see it but you kind of want it so that you can't squish it or deform it by pressing but you can still easily put your fingernail or easily carve it so it's not like completely bone dry so yeah that's the first part hey so it's a few days um later and i've just let the box dry out so you can see now that it's much firmer if i'm poking it well don't really make it doesn't really make it indent but if i stick my nail in it still kind of leaves a mark so this is quite a good time for carving so this is about <clears throat> so if you're used to throwing on the wheel i would say this is probably more or less leather hard so what i do is i just remove the lid so that's the lid you can see there and i just sponge everything just to smooth everything over so just sponging kind of the opening of the box so that that's just has a nice kind of clean surface um and don't worry about the size because we're going to be carving those so that doesn't really matter and then again on the lid part i just find this just adds because when i carve it while it's a bit soft you always get a few bits and stuff that kind of stick on there but while it's a bit harder it's easier to be a bit more like forceful with the sponge to get all um, those bits off and it just have like a nice smooth kind of surface and i'll just go in the roof of the lid just in this opening or oh, nick nicked it a bit to so just yeah that's looking a bit better now just something like that and now we really want to make sure that that lid has a nice um, kind of fit into the box first I'm just going to clean up those inside walls if you can see a little bit rough in there so I'm just gonna just get I quite like this carving tool for um, hollowing pieces out so I'll just really gently just run that up the sides just to smooth over any carving marks I don't really want to alter that opening I just want to make sure those walls are kind of nice and smooth and I also just get one of these tools just to scoop everything out And I'll just smooth over that bottom just to make sure it's really nice in there. And then again, I'll just take a sponge and really just spend some time smoothing off the interior of the box. It's also a good idea at this point to just spend some time smoothing over the base, just so that it looks nice, but also I feel that it helps to compress the clay a little bit. Because of course, this method, you don't really spend too much time compressing the clay as you would if you were throwing on the wheel. So it will just, it should help with the kind of reducing the formation of S cracks in the base. Something like that. So now it's much smoother in there. Also, I have these kind of sponges that are kind of have these like edges that I find really helpful, really getting into those corners. I'm pretty happy with how the inside is looking now. So I'm just going to flip it over and clean up the base. So to do that, I quite like using this tool. It's the, um, I don't know how to say this. Is it Shime or Zyme or I'm not sure. But I'll leave this link down below. It's a teardrop one. 
and I just kind of run that really gently over the base of the box just to smooth that out, make it a bit flatter. I know that my base is kind of on the thin side, it's how I carve it, so I don't want to take too much clay away from here, but I just want to just spend some time cleaning up that base so it's nice and smooth. I just tap it onto the surface of my table as well, just to smooth that out. So yeah, that's looking a bit better now. So yeah, I'm gonna just smooth over the opening of the box with my finger and pop on the lid. So that actually has quite a nice fit already. But if I wiggle it, it has a little bit of movement. So I try to make my lid really fit like nice and snug in there. So I'll just push those walls in a little bit just so that that opening closes up and put the lid back on. Yeah. So I can feel that that's much tighter now. Yeah, that's not gonna move around too much. Perfect. So let's get on and do the fun part of carving. So for that, I always use these kind of tools you can get like at the DIY store. So this is just for filling in walls. Um, so but experiment with things that you have. You can use knives. Um, I quite like these because they're kind of flexible and thin. So I'm gonna first start with one side. I also have this one that's a little bit bigger, which I might start with. So what I do every time I make a cut into the wall, I'm looking to see how thick that wall actually is by taking the lid off and then cutting into the clay because you obviously don't want to make a hole. It's very easy at this point to make a hole because you can't really see what you're carving. Um, but if you just make sure you kind of look before you go in into it, <laughs> it will help. So that's my first one. So I'll kind of, I'll bring it in so you can see. So yeah, this is quite a good um, texture to carve it out. Kind of, you have like a really smooth um, kind of facet and then the, where the clay rips is super textured, which is what I like. And I think I'm gonna to switch to this thinner one as I go into the box. Yeah, like that. And again, I kind of go into the other side and try to kind of do the same. So I carve into this side, then go ahead and do the same on that side. And hopefully this area just rips because it's a bit weaker. That's what I'm trying to do. And again, I'll just go and carve this side like that oh it looks like there is a hole there but it's not it's just the rip it hasn't gone through to the other side that worried me a bit <laughs> um and then i'm just going to pick the box up and i quite like also carving up from the base just to give some different angles So it looks a bit more interesting. Something like that. Yeah, so I'll keep going on like that. Carving away. I quite like making these box quite angular because the actual form is square. I think it kind of marries up quite nicely. But of course you don't need to do the same kind of shape as me if you want to do a different, um, you can even do round. I've done round ones before. And you don't have to stick to like the same dimensions as me really just do what you want it's pretty much all the kind of the same technique that's kind of what i like about kurenuki it's i think of it as a technique rather than a style so that you can really put your own personal stamp on it it just gives you that freedom to be quite free with it and experimental Sometimes throwing on the wheel is a little bit different. It's more technical. Of course, you can still add your kind of stamp to it, but you're a little bit more um, kind of uh, limited for what you can do. You can obviously just throw round things 
on the wheel. Of course, you can alter them, but I don't know. I find with Kuranuki, you can really make any shape you want. So I'm going to go to the other side. Let's see, I can take a bit more away. Right there. was a bit deep but I'm still okay sometimes I could make a cut and then I'm a bit scared to open it because I probably have made a hole but that one was fine <laughs> and again I'll just take some diagonal cuts up with how that's looking like nice and textured I'll just show you a bit closer up so now I'm gonna do the what I'm gonna do now is actually just refine the bottom a little bit so what I like to do is just run my um, these kind of knives down and bevel the um, edge of the base I find it just neatens everything up I also quite like to have a line to glaze to, so I know that I will glaze up to this line. And then just put my maker's stamp in there. And yeah, again, I will just feel, and if I want, I will probably take some of these corners out if I feel they're a bit heavy, a bit too sticking out. There's still some clay in there. Yeah. Oh. Then I'm going to do the top now. So yeah, so how I do the top, I quite like to actually use this really big one. And I'm just gonna really go as far in as I can. <laughs> so you can kind of get a sense of how thick that top is. So actually my lid isn't too thick, so I need to make sure I don't go in too deep with this. So I'm just gonna go, try to go at least about halfway I think I'm something like there. And then I kind of tried to marry up the carving, so I kind of stopped. I'll stop a bit further in to try to join up those carving lines. And then I'm gonna rip that. So that's kind of like a nice rip. And then what I'll do is just make it a bit more interesting and just take a few bits out. Just so it kind of looks a bit more like a rock formation. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Try to make that just a little bit more interesting, not like a very smooth, straight rip. Yeah, something like that. I think it looks nice. So I'll just show you in a bit closer. Yeah, so that's what the top's looking like. And then now I'm kind of happy with that. I'm just going to test how it's sitting into that box. Just make sure that it has a nice fit. Smooth in that kind of gallery a bit better. Yeah, that's good. And then what I do for the last part is I get that thin, this thin one, and I just check around the edges. And I just really want to make sure that I have some nice, um, so the kind of, the lid and the box look as one. So me carving that top part of the lid would have altered some of these side parts, for example, there. So I just need to make sure that it all kind of looks at the same level. So I'm just gonna come and just carve that join a little bit better. Just want it to be nice and seamless. Hope that makes sense. Just making that edge really fit together nicely. Yeah, something like that, I would say. Yeah, so that's it. So that's my carving done. What I do is set this aside now, let that dry out till it's completely bone dry and I'll do a bisque firing. Yeah, so I fire that to about cone on four and then I will glaze it. So I actually think I'll show you how I glaze it. It might be a bit better. Um, so I can, you can see it all finished up. 
so yeah, the next clip will probably be me glazing after it's been bisque-fired. Okay, bye! So I've just pulled the box out of the kiln, it's gone through a bisque firing, so I fired to about 1048 um, degrees C and it's on its way to becoming ceramic but it's still porous so it can take up the glaze. Um, but I'll just first show you how I prepare it for glazing. Because it has a lid I always wax this area so that the glaze doesn't adhere to where the lid and the box meet. So I first take the lid off. I just use um it's called maybe i'll show you it's called this wax emulsion it should be available at any pottery store um, and it's just basically wax that is um, an emulsion and water so you can add water if you want to thin it out just so it has a better working consistency so i'm going to just paint that on to where like i said where the box um, lid meets the box And when I do this, I always use like rubbish paint brushes because your brushes won't survive um, constant use with the wax. It probably will, they survive kind of like five uses or something. So I make sure I don't use my nice paint brushes for this. So I'm just kind of painting it on. You don't really have to worry about it being even or anything. Just make sure that it's not too um, thick because otherwise it will take a while to dry. So I'm just kind of putting it on where I know that the box will meet. And if any glaze gets there, of course, once it melts, it's going to get stuck. So You also have another option of firing the lid separate to the box, which um, I've been told some people that make these kind of hand-built boxes, they do. Um, and it's an option if you don't want to do this step but you have a little bit of a risk if any if there's any warpage of the lid and the box that they might not fit back together quite snugly especially if your lid fits your box like really tightly um, any movement will kind of cause a problem of you trying to kind of put it back on with a nice fit but if you have kind of a loose lid into the box I think it should be fine Especially because the Kuranuki, the, the method is quite, um, the way we carve the lid and the box, you are left with quite like a stable lid and box, quite thick walled, that it probably will be okay. But I always find that I'd rather just be safe than sorry and wax the two parts. So that's the lid waxed. So if you want, you can leave like, for example, this to be glazed, but I just wax the whole area. I think it looks cleaner. And then for the what the box, I will do the same. So again, wax the top part. And because I have a gallery in the lid, I will come down and wax down a bit into the inside of the box just in case um, that gallery um, touches the kind of in interior of the box and might get stuck so I'm just going to wax a little bit down into the inside as well. something like that so I'm just gonna let these two pieces dry now so you're looking for the wax to be completely translucent so none of these white bits and then we'll go on to glazing so I've just got my glaze in here um, it's if I'll, I'll link the recipe down below in case you want to um, use it it comes out as like a blue kind of like a browny blue so I'll obviously show you anyway the box after it's fired so you can see the colour 
um, but I'm just giving it a mix, making sure my glaze is suspended, like everything is all mixed up, fresh. I use this kind of toilet brush. I find it's like really good at getting right into the corners of the bucket. So yeah, just make sure your glaze is fully mixed before you go ahead and glaze your piece. My pieces have dried, so the wax now is translucent. And I'm first going to pour the glaze inside to first glaze the inside of the box. And then pour that out. And I'll just glaze um, by dipping so it goes onto the outside, but I'll just make, I'll stop before it gets to the base. So I'm just gonna dip that in. And I'll just hold it there until it kind of um, dries on the piece. And then you can just get a sponge and just get any droplets that have um, is kind of suspended on the wax. I'll show you there. You have these kind of glazed droplets. So just get those off with a sponge before they dry. And then I'll just set that piece down onto the surface to let it dry out before I do my final cleanup. Um, for the lid is a little bit easier, I just dip the whole thing, so I just grab onto the waxed area and then just dip the whole thing in glaze. You can see that the wax really helps for the glaze not to stick, so I just kind of get those droplets again off with the sponge. Get kind of the majority off at this stage while the glaze is wet and then just set it down and I'll check the piece before it goes into the kiln. So yeah, just once the glaze is dried out a little bit, you can just have a proper look around and remove any of those glaze. Yeah, so now I can pick up the piece where I've glazed it, it's dried, so I can really kind of get an idea of how it's looking inside. So I'm pretty happy that that's all kind of clean where the waxed area is. And then underneath, I'm just going to make sure there's no glaze um, on the base, something like that. If you want, this is where my finger was, you can um, go and put glaze back there, but I quite like that kind of handmade look, so I'll just leave it. And again, with the lid, I'm just going to make sure there's no bits of glaze droplets on that waxed area. Just make sure that's really clean. And then I'll pop the lid back on the right way around. <laughs> oh, I think that was okay. Let me see. Oh, yeah, there is. So yeah, so now they will be this box is going to be put into the kiln. Um, as one piece and I fire to kind of in between cone 6 and cone 7 to just over 1200 degrees C so yeah I'll show you it after the kiln um, if you're interested on the program I use I can also leave that link down below let me know if you'd like that um, so yeah this is gonna go into my kiln and then the next clip I'll show you me unloading it 